Hey, welcome, Alan Simpson here. In this lesson, we're going to talk about using JavaScript to highlight the current page link in the nav bar on a website. Now, I say page, but it might actually be a folder that contains multiple pages, which is actually the case on my own site. But the code I'm going to be showing here is, is that same code. So um, this is my site as it stands right now. And when you click one of these, it actually opens the home page of a folder. But any given um, particular link here, like this one, actually has several areas. And as you click around in there, it still keeps that area highlighted so you know basically where you are on the site and can jump to another place easily. Now, there's a lot going on in there. So for this example, I'm going to use kind of a watered-down version of that. It's the same idea. Basically, there's a home page, all right, and it's got a header and a nav bar over on the side. Okay, and um, if we look at the code for that, it links to an external style sheet called the uh, assets slash CSS slash style sheet. A lot of times I like to put code that goes to, you know, it spreads across multiple pages up in its own folder called assets. Anyways, um, th that's just an organizational thing. But here's the style sheet. You can see it has style rules for the header and the nav bar. This nav a dot current page is the one I want to apply to the nav bar to indicate the folder or the page that the user is in. There's a in the images folder I have one image called logo, and that's just the logo that appears at the left side of the header. Okay, and then I also have a link out to an external JavaScript file, main.js, and that's empty right now because we're going to write all the JavaScript code in this tutorial. All right, so let me, uh, if we look at the nav bar, right now current page class isn't assigned to anything. Let's try it out manually. I'll say class equal quote current page close quote and then that will apply to that one particular link. And if I move it to one of these other links, then that one will be highlighted. And that's fine to do it manually like that, but in real life that's not going to work. I mean, what I want to do is write some JavaScript code that decides where the user is in the site and then, you know, highlights the appropriate link on its own. So that'll be JavaScript code. So we'll take out, we won't have anything starting as classical current page. All right, so we'll start where they're all the same. Now, right now, my section one and section two folders are empty. So let me go stick a home page in each one of those. I'll just do uh, name it index.html. I'll put the exact same code in from the other one and just change the heading one title in the body to section one home page. And I'll copy that and I will create a new index.html in section two, paste in that code, make that the section two home page. Now you might notice that I'm not saving my work very often. I happen to be using um, VS Code and I have autosave turned on, so that's why I don't have to save manually. If you're using a different editor, you you know, you'd have to save your work more often. But again, that's entirely optional. You can use any editor you want, any um, settings you want. All right, so let's go, let's look at a potential problem here. If I go to the home page now and I click refresh, everything's fine, but as soon as I click section one, it doesn't open a page, it opens the whole directory and I see the contents of the directory instead of the page there. If I hit section two, I run into the same problem. If I open the index.html page by clicking its link here, that page does open, but the picture doesn't show, and the CSS styles aren't coming through. And if I click one of those links, it's really a mess. So what's going on? Why doesn't that copied code work outside of the root folder? And the reason is because from one of these subfolders, the path to the assets folder is actually dot dot slash. Okay, you got to go up a level to get to the assets folder. Um, and that would be for um, both those folders. And I have to do dot dot slash index too to get up there. Okay, so if section one works now. When I click home, it takes me there. But section two is still a mess. And if you think about it, if I went down another level, I'd have to repeat all this code and use dot, dot, slash, dot, dot. That's kind of a pain. It would be better if I could just universally start each of these paths with a slash. And that says, 
go to this folder, not relative to where I am right now, but relative to the root. And that's great because that means I can use the exact same code in every single page. All right, I just have to start with a slash. And I could actually externalize this code and not even repeat it on every page, but um, that's not what we're talking about here. I talk about that in my uh, longer class. I'll mention it at the end. But here, let's just deal with the leading slash. Okay, so if I say, okay, I'm going to make every one of these paths start from the root by starting it with the slash, and then I don't have to worry about what folder or subfolder the page is in. Instead, I have to worry about the fact that it doesn't work at all in any of the pages. Why is that? Well, it's because it's not coming out of a web server. If this page were being served from a web server, this would be fine, but it's not. Now, if you had some kind of local host like AMPS or WAMP or MAMP or something, you could use that. But if you don't have any of those, you can do, use Live Server in VS Code. Just go into Extensions and search for Live Server. It's this purple one. I already have it installed, so I can't install it, but you would just install it and click uh, Reload. Okay, and then whenever you want to check your work in the browser, you can't do you know, right-click and open in default browser anymore. You have to right-click and say, open with live server. And then those links will work and everything will be fine. And if you already have the page open, you can just refresh it. You don't have to always go this way. But either way, once it's open in the browser, as long as you open it that way with a, some kind of local host showing, with some kind of local host, then those links will work. And uh, none of them are highlighted right now because we didn't write that part yet. But they basically work, and I can go from page to page without it bombing out. Okay? So um, that's live server. And we're going to have to use that the rest of this time because the JavaScript code is also going to be assume that it's being served from a server. It doesn't matter which one. This live server is fine. Okay. So we'll put all the JavaScript in um, this main.js file under Assets JavaScript. And before it does anything, we want to make sure the page is completely loaded. In other words, completely rendered on the screen. So for that, we start the whole thing with window unload equal function, open paren, closing paren, open curly, closing curly. All right, and the first thing we want to do once the page is loaded is figure out where the browser is or where this page is. So I'll put in a comment saying, get the current page path. And I'll put that in a variable, and I'll just name that path array. Path array is just a name I made up. It could be X or Goober or Wingnut or whatever. And in that, we're going to store location.path name, which is an actual uh, JavaScript thing. And then I'll pop an, an alert to see what's in that path array thing. Now, normally, it's everything to the right of the, like, dot .com or something in the site. but we, we don't have that right now, so it's just going to be everything to the right of that first slash. So when I'm nowhere, it's, uh, well, it's the first slash. If I go to section one, see how it's the end of that address, that URL in the address bar. If I go to the home page with the index.html showing, then it says index.html. And if I stick index.html in the end of section one here, then it's all that. So it's everything after the what would be the dot com. Now I want to split it up in little chunks, so I'm going to add dot split, open paren, closing paren, with a forward slash in quotes in there. And that breaks it into basically parts where the everything between the sections is a separate thing. So the first one will be zero, the second one will be one, third one will be two. So if I look at it that way, and then as I go through it, that's 0, 1, 2 for section 1.index.html. So pretty much this alert path array 1 is just going to be the folder name that I'm in. Okay, so section 1 when I click there. And if I'm in the home page, uh, there's no folder name. It just says index.html. Uh, why don't we stick that in a variable, we'll call it folder name, because it will either be the folder name that the page is in, or it will might be nothing or indexed in HTML for on the home page. But again, folder name is just a name I made up, 
Okay, it could have been anything. And I'm going to put that path array one in there. And again, we can use an alert just to see what it actually is, make sure it's doing what we assume it's doing. Uh, I'm in section one, it shows section one, right? Yep, if I click section two, it shows section two. So it's showing what I expect. So we could say, if folder name equal equal, quote, quote, with no space in between, nothing, all right, so the folder name is nothing, or that's two pipe characters, folder name equal equal index.html. If that's true, then I must be in the root folder or the home page folder. Now, if we go look at the page code, I set that to an ID of home. So I'm, I'm here if there is no folder name. So we'll say document dot get element by ID. All right, pair of parens and a pair of quotes, home dot class name, which applies a CSS class to it, is that current page class I made up. And sure enough, when I'm on the home page, that home link now is hi highlighted due to this current page class. If I go to a different page, or if I go to the yeah, if I go to section one, then it, nothing's highlighted because so far I've only uh, taken care of the case where it's no folder name. I have to go back to my JavaScript code now and say, um, let's see where am I here? Okay, say else, else it must be one of those, it must be one of those subfolders. And the nice thing about doing it this way is, um, you know, it doesn't matter how many subfolders you have, it just works to, and you don't have to change the code. All right, let me just put in a reminder in here that you do have to execute this code in localhost or something to get it to work. And this comment will just say, if I'm at the home page, put the current name, current page CSS class name on that first link. All right, I'll leave these comments in there so when you're reviewing the code later, you'll know what it says. Say, okay, so then on other, Otherwise, under the else, we want to loop through the remaining links and figure out which one is pointing to the folder name that's in the folder name variable. Okay, so if, um, if the page is in section two, I want to highlight the link that's pointing to the section two folder. All right, so to get that to happen, I'm going to have to grab this whole... Uh, I can't use this ID home anymore. I have to grab this whole sidebar element and kind of go through each one of these links one at a time till I find the right one. So to make that happen, uh, see I already have my L, so I need to say, well first let me grab that whole sidebar element, we'll say, and I'll call it nav, that's just a made up name. Document.getElementById.side, uh, side nav it's called. Okay, so that's a reference to this whole sidebar in the page, which we gave an ID of side nav, and that includes all the A tags inside it, all the links inside it, and there can be any number of those. We don't care how many, it'll still work. All right, let's go back to our JavaScript. I'm going to make a little collection of all the links in there. I'll call it links, and links again is just a name I made up, and it consists of nav, that is this nav bar, get elements by tag name. In other words, I want you to get all the tags, all the A tags, all right? So that's like a little collection. If I say alert that links.length, then go back to the page in um, that live server, all right? The first one's highlighted. If I click section one, it says three there because I hit that alert and there are indeed three links in here. If I hit section two, there's three of them, so it knows how many there are in here to look at. All right, so we're going to say for we need a little loop that says for, and we can say i. Typically, we say i equals zero to start of the first one, but that's the home link here, and we know that's it's not that. So we can start at one for this link. That'll be section one. For i equal one, starting at one going for however many links there are and incrementing by one each time, which is I++. So basically, this is going to step through them all. All right, and that has to go in its own curly braces. And we'll say if 
links, if, yeah, if links sub i, that's square brackets with an i in the middle, and that basically says if the link we're looking at right now, links sub i, if it's href attribute, all right, so it's going to say, in the code it's going to say something like a href equal uh, section 1 or section 2. We want to look at that act, that href attribute. And if we look inside of it, if we say index of whatever folder name it is we're looking for right now, and that's in the variable name folder name. Okay, so if the folder name we're looking for is inside this particular links href, then you know, I have to say greater than minus 1 because if it doesn't exist in there, it'll be minus 1. It doesn't exist at all. All right, so if it exists in there, then link sub i, in other words, the link we're looking at right now, its class name equals current page, which is what gives it the highlight. And so if I got that right, then when I click links over here, right now I'm on the home page. If I click section 1, it does indeed highlight the link that matches the folder I'm in or the home page if I'm in no folder. And that's really all you need right there. It's like, what, 20 lines of code? It's a little tricky, but it uh, does take care of the whole problem. And, and even if you add more folders and more links in the nav bar, it'll still work. You won't have to change the code. And I'll put that whole thing out in, in a folder so you can download it and play around with it and use it however you wish. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can click the link in the description. Otherwise, if you're already on my page, uh, look for the link below this video. Now, if you're interested in watching me create the whole site, which includes that and many other things, on my site, just click this hands-on web thing and you can find videos and all the files at different stages of development that make up that site. And that includes both the, uh, you know, highlighting the current link and also that nav bar is uh, responsive, meaning that on phones and narrower screens, that nav bar is out of your way till you click or tap the little hamburger menu that appears. Okay, so that code is also in the larger site, and all that is available from that hands-on link page at my site. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you learned a thing or two about JavaScript along the way, and I uh, hope to see you around the net. Bye-bye now.